Next, we will just move right back to the battery here. Um, I don't have wrenches to take it out, but I will show you how you can. You have um, these 10 millimeter nuts, essentially. They're really long nuts, and then there's really long studs that come up from this platform here on the bottom. So you have a 63 pound battery sitting on top of this platform right here. And obviously this is the, the transmission, we'll call it. So the battery uh, is, is quite heavy. If you're you know, not a very strong person, it's gonna be hard for you to get in and out. Um, the studs are very long, so it is you know, fairly easy to get it in and out. You might, you know, if you're, if you're weaker, you might bang it on the frame a little bit, but you can just kind of drop it in there. It, it will kind of just clunk its way through. And then these are just tightened down with 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, it's, it's hot swappable, so if you were could afford another battery, these things are not cheap for the batteries, but let's say you did afford another battery, you can pull these things out, and I kid you not, I mean, even if you don't know what you're doing, it probably doesn't take any more than 90 seconds to do a battery change in this bike. It's really pretty easy. It's just a 10 millimeter T-handle, 10 millimeter T-handle. I mean, you could do it with a rattle gun, just go bzz, 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 and just yank this thing out, jam a new one on, bzz, 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 just like NASCAR, and you've got another battery in there. Um, super, super simple. Very, very cool. I don't know, KTM just signed an agreement with uh, Honda and Yamaha for um, a battery standard for electric bikes. Um, that's new as of about a week and a half ago, so I don't know when you're watching this video, but this is um, March 24th of 2021, and that's, uh, that's a thing. So Honda, Yamaha, and KTM are probably gonna be sharing batteries in the future. I doubt this system will be reverse compatible with what they're doing there, just because there's multiple manufacturers and this isn't the latest tech. This tech is from like 2008 or nine, so I'm sure they'll upgrade it. But I think KTM will stick with this platform on some of the lesser fancy bikes like this one, like the not motocross bikes. And you'll probably see some e-powered scooters and things like that in the future as the market demands them. This is the charging plug hole. I have charging videos, so I'm not gonna go over that. You basically unscrew that. It's got sealed O-rings and stuff in there. And you just charge the battery in there or plug it up and charge it through there. Uh, the bikes are fully submergible. You can ride these things underwater. You will not see me doing that in a video. I can't afford this thing to get ruined, so I'm not gonna be doing submarine tests for you. But you can fully immerse these things underwater and ride them. Um, make sure that you have the O-rings and the seals and everything are fine. I don't recommend that. Um, I probably shouldn't even tell you that, but don't get worried about getting zapped by one of these things if you've done proper maintenance on it and you go through a water hole. It's just not gonna happen. It's a whole bunch of batteries inside this big sealed aluminum case. Don't open it, don't do anything stupid like that. It's high voltage, it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> um, since we're under the seat here, uh, this is the little uh, accessory battery that, that runs the, the key and the computer and all that sort of stuff to start it up. Um, when I store it, I actually just pull the little plugs off of it. So if somebody was to get a hold of it or I forgot the key in it and they tried to start it. Um, there's supposed to be a little rubber band on here, mine doesn't. Here is a little fuse box in case you ever blow a fuse. Um, these are tail light and blinker plugs that are, are on the bike when, it, when you get it. Um, I've uh, modified mine a little bit because I am going to put a tail light to make it street legal and stuff at some point. So that's, uh, that's what those are. You don't really need to screw around with anything in there. Uh, since I got this popped up, I will talk about jumping these bikes. They fall like a ton of lead from the air. They're not gas bikes. They fly different. They ride different. It just is what it is. Uh, since this bike was not designed to hit, you know, 58 foot triples like I'm doing on it. Uh, this top shock bolt is a weak link. It bends if you land hard from huge hits. Um, it's not a problem. You can actually ride with it bent. Um, I've taken such huge hits on the thing that my frame flexed enough and I have a small dent in my battery. But uh, from, the, from, the sh from the shock whacking the battery and stuff. Anyway, 
I don't recommend that either, but this bolt does bend. Um, they're not cheap. Can't remember what retail price is. I wanted to say it's like somewhere around $24 for this big bolt. It's short threads, long, long body. So it's sort of a special KTM one. I'm sure you could have one stronger made. And I thought about doing that, but I don't know that I would want to do that because I would rather have the bolt bend than it screw anything else up in my bike that wouldn't give first, if that makes sense. Like crack the frame or something because the frame was taking the load instead of this bolt. So if you're jumping the thing, get a couple of these extra shock bolts, replace them. When you're taking them out, you'll know it's bent because you'll see the shock going up and down. And yeah, so not a big deal. Just letting people know um, it's not another reason that you shouldn't buy this bike. It's that's people online get ridiculous and they try and point fingers at stuff and it's just dumb. Don't not buy the bike because it bends a $24 shock bolt and don't not jump it if you want to jump it because it bends a $24 shock bolt. Who cares? Um, you can see it's more like this, um, I don't know, we'll sort of call it a trellis style frame, you know, like you would see in a 690 Enduro or a Duke or something like that. Um, so that the battery can fit inside there. It's pretty cool. I jump mine a lot So I inspect my frame a lot. It's very easy to look at all the welds and everything when the battery's out It's a great big huge hole and you can stick your head down inside there even and you can just inspect all of the The welds and stuff and I look for paint flexing and all these sorts of things because I jump it so much I just want to make sure that nothing's cracking and the front of the bike doesn't snap off or anything you know, I look up in here, um, if you, old motocross bikes, you know, I used to have a boss that, um, his, his sponsored riders all rode Yamahas and they would all start flexing the paint off of the, the steer tube and things like that because the frames were under so much stress. So I check all those areas that I know from the old motocross days and I'm not seeing any problems with the frame on this thing yet. It's, it's kind of an, a neat design. The, these things are obviously separate, different color. The frames in multiple pieces. Um, I'm probably going to take these off and get them powder coated as part of my my cool uh, facelift on this bike. But I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have told you that. I'm spoiling it. But uh, the subframe is plastic, so it's a little bit like um, Husqvarna's um, motocross bikes and enduro bikes. Um, I have flipped this bike several times. I've crashed it quite a few times. The subframe hasn't broken on it. Um, they've been on free rides like this for years and years and years. That's probably why KTM knew that they could use them on the, <laughs> the Husqvarna's because it's a plastic subframe. You know, it's not the strongest thing in the world. I also don't think it's the most expensive thing in the world. Um, it's very easy to take on and off. Uh, all the plastic, all the back end, everything is very easy to take on and off. Uh, the bike is water cooled. So we're going to go back up to the front here again. It has these two tiny little radiators on it get in there so you can see them um, you know they I don't think there's a huge problem with these things overheating or anything but uh, they're there so do check the fluid from time to time um, it's got a little little tiny cap on it like uh, the 85s or the 690s or something do down there um, it is a pressurized cap I believe uh, I don't know what it is 1.2 bar or something don't quote any of that either but uh, they are water cooled and the water pump does run when the accessories are turned on. Um, down here at the motor, it's just pretty basic. I haven't been touching anything on the motor because I don't want to screw it up because my dealer, my local dealer, is not officially an e-bike dealer yet. And so if I, if I futz with this thing and, and try and give it more power and I screw something up, they don't have the cons computer system probably until next year to be able to recalibrate everything for me. So you won't see any modification videos from me, at least until my local dealer has the diagnostic computer that I can try and uh, try and get things back to stock settings because I don't want to play around with it and have to spend $600 each way or $700 each way to ship my bike to the mainland to have it worked on. That does not sound awesome for me. The seat, uh, since we're, we're kind of going that way, uh, seat, I don't know, it seems fairly comfortable. It's very flat. Um, that's one thing that makes it feel like it sort of handles weird when you first get them. The, uh, the, there's no, no curve in the front, so when you go up to corner this bike, you will tend to get a little bit too far in the front. And on the stock suspension, it's very, very soft, so it, it makes the front end of the bike dive. 
Um, that's just a learning curve for learning how to ride these bikes. It's, it's not a big deal. Once you figure out where you need to sit, the, that, that handling issue sort of goes away, especially if you have the suspension beefed up like I do. Just so you know, it's a very, very flat profile and you, it is hard to find your, your place on the thing when you first start riding them. A radiator, shrouds, I don't know, they they're, seem to hold up okay. I broke one um, riding in the mud the first day I got it. Uh, I think my knee braces probably took it out and smashed it, but uh, they seem to be sufficient. They got a nice sleek profile. The bike is kind of the same width all the way through. It's, uh, it's very, very sleek, which is interesting because the way that it carries the weight is more like um, a bigger enduro bike, but you have this like really really slim feel and so it's that's one of the quirky things that you have to kind of get used to feeling anyway it's it's just a little bit a little bit different everything everything about these things is a little bit different don't don't expect it to feel exactly like your gas bike you're going to be disappointed you won't be disappointed after you ride it three times and you learn how it works and how it it functions as its own system all right so we'll go down here i can hit hit a couple birds with one stone here um I installed a rear brake pedal on there. I'm not gonna go into that any further than that. Um, I have a video about it, it's very, very long. There's a process to putting one of these on there. There is no kit available. A lot of people, the magazines and stuff, they, they just spread fake news all the time. They talk about kits. There is no kit, you have to make the kit. So look up that video if you're interested in having the rear brake down below. If you're somebody that rides mountain bikes a lot and you're not jumping back and forth on a motocross bike, I will say um, you may not want to do the rear brake down here because the front brake, as I told you before, you can load it up and use it like a clutch where if you put the rear brake on here, it's a lot harder to, especially when you're trying to balance some things, to manipulate the rear brake through terrain and use it like a clutch like you would if it's up on the handlebar. So if you're kind of doing motocrossy type stuff and you're jumping on and off your gas bike a bunch onto this thing um, and you're having troubles with there being no rear brake down here, then maybe put one on. I hope to be able to put the dual system on so that I can run both so that I have both benefits. But um, rear brake down here, basically um, same master cylinder as the 85. This is a gas bike free ride brake pedal and then you have to buy some other parts and stuff so it's it's a process go watch that video if you're interested in that pds suspension the pds means that it's uh directly connected to the swing arm and there's no linkage um it's progressive damping system i believe is what it stands for i have a much 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 stiffer spring on here um, i also have a straight rate spring that's covered in my suspension video so i won't cover that anymore um anyway it's it's all beefed up the swing arm is your typical nice uh, KTM quality, nice and shiny. Uh, it's a little bit thinner and smaller, kind of like the 85 stuff back here. Um, mine uh, was actually in a crash, so I just ground the thing off and so I can put a bike stand in there now. <laughs> but usually this is a, a sealed, sealed nut. Same thing on the rear brakes, do more maintenance on them and they'll work good. There's not a lot of feel to them. It's not real soft and progressive feeling. It's more like a little bit of an on-off switch that you have to stomp on a little bit harder, but um, it, it works just fine. Once you get used to it, it feels okay. It kind of doesn't feel great at first, but it does have enough power. I don't have any problems with it slowing me down whatsoever. It just doesn't have that nice, awesome Brembo feel. It's more like a, I don't know if you've ever ridden a Chinese pit bike or some something that has kind of crappier, um, hydraulic brakes on it it feels a little bit more like that where it's just like on off switch and hard to operate um, but the power is sufficient bleed the system more often the kickstand honestly is sort of worthless on this bike um, especially if you put off-road style tires on it because it changes the angle at which the bike leans on the stand um, the bike also carries the weight quite high as I've said multiple times so when you get and on this like thinner stand, it's just, it just doesn't hold it up very well. Um, with the, the height of the bike changing because of the tires and it's just, it's just a puny little stick. So make sure that you put the bike very, very securely in one spot before you, before you walk away from it. Cause it will fall over all the time. Um, maybe put a rock or something under there if you're in dirt or stick um, for the kickstand. 
It also, from the factory, I believe, comes with the bushing installed here. I have a video about this as well. Um, the bushing allows the kickstand to kick back up as soon as you take off so that you don't, uh, you know, jam it into the ground and crash. Um, I took it out of mine so that it wouldn't just flip up if I moved my bike at all because it was a pain in the butt. But anyway, um, kickstand does work. I make sure that I rubber band it when I'm, when I'm jumping or, or riding. Um, your foot on these kickstands tends to, if you squeeze the bike real well, and that you're on the balls of your foot, which you should be, whole nother riding video that I'm gonna give you guys. Um, your foot can sit on the kickstand a little bit here. And I hear my friend riding all the time because he doesn't use his rubber band. He, he has his heel sitting on it and he's riding around and his, his heel's bouncing off of this thing and it's just flapping around. Land from a big jump and it can, it can come down like this. So it's not really a design flaw. <laughs> But I guess in, in a sense it sort of is. It also sticks out just a little more than I would like. But uh, it is what it is. It works okay. It doesn't bother me. I put the rubber band on it. I've left it on there and I'm not even a kickstand guy because it's just more convenient sometimes when I'm, when I'm out and about and kind of putting around on the bike. Or, uh, you know, I, I take off somewhere and I don't have a bike stand with me.